All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Redevelopment Board. This meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, so now I will go ahead and confirm that all members of the Redevelopment Board are present and can hear me, starting with Kim Lau. Yes. Dean Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakalas. Melissa present. Uh, Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. And I'm Rachel Zenberry, and I am here this evening together with two members of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Jennifer Raitt. Present. And Kelly Lineman. Present. Great. So happy new year to everyone. Welcome as we kick off the new year with our first Redevelopment Board meeting of the year. Um, our uh, first meeting uh, agenda item are the two public hearings we have this evening. Um, the first is going to be the continued public hearing, docket number 3665. And prior to the meeting starting, I just confirmed with Jenny Great that um, we do not have the applicant with us this evening, but we do have a letter requesting a continuation of the hearing from this evening to January 24th. Um, I do know that the letter indicated that the applicant did not have any notice of the meeting, but I just wanted to state for the record that the applicant did actually specifically request this evening when giving the option between the two. Um, but I have personally have no issue with continuing it since we did originally offer the option of the 24th to the 24th. Um, but I'll go ahead and open it up to the uh, members of the redevelopment board. Actually, first I'll turn it over to Jenny to see if there's anything else um, on behalf of the applicant that she wanted to share. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Um, no, and I think I appreciate you clarifying that we had offered January 24th initially and that we had anticipated that this applicant would return on January 3rd, but indicated that they did not have enough time to get their team together in order to be responsive. Um, and that I anticipate that we will receive something from the applicant soon and that they should um, ultimately be able to proceed with January 24th. Fantastic, thanks. You're welcome. Um, so at this point, I think I'll turn it over to the board to see if there's any questions, concerns, or discussion about continuing the hearing to the 24th, starting with Ken. No, I have no issue uh, with this continuing on to the next meeting. Great, thanks, Ken. Jean? Agree. Steve? Uh, nothing here. And Melissa? Um, no, I'm okay with that. Okay, um, so with that short discussion, uh, I would uh, ask if there is a motion to continue the public hearing for docket 3665 for 645 Massachusetts Avenue to our next meeting on uh, January 24th. So motioned. Second. Great, thanks, Jean. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Uh, so uh, docket number 3665 will be continued to the next redevelopment board meeting on uh, January 24th, 2022. So at this point, unfortunately, we need to take a, a quick break. Not a quick break, actually a long break. Um, the next public hearing was advertised for 8.15 p.m. Um, and Jenny, I don't believe that um, we can start that earlier. So I think we'll need to, to take a pause and then reconvene um, here at 8.15. Correct, the applicant is not here and it is a published uh, public hearing at 8.15 p.m. Uh, right. because we had intended for 6.45 Mass Ave to start at 7.30. Great. So, um, you know, people are welcome to stay online and mute and stop their video, but we will reconvene promptly at 8.15.
we can see you all then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are going to go ahead and uh, get restarted with the redevelopment board meeting now that it's 815 for docket number 3520, which is the public hearing for the signage at 117 Broadway. And I'll first turn it over to Jenny Wright to see if there is anything that she would like to highlight from the memo that the department put together. Um, thank you, Rachel. I am going to turn it over to Kelly Linema, who prepared the staff memo with Allie Carter, and I'll bring up the memo if you'd like. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. So this is a an application for a special permit under ED under environmental design review for 117 Broadway. Um, this, if you'll recall, is a recent housing corporation of Arlington development. Um, it received a special permit under environmental design review in 2016 for a mixed use development. Um, it is going to contain, or it's nearly complete, um, 14 units of housing and then approximately just over 5,000 square feet of ground floor commercial. Um, the tenant, Arlington Needs, who's here before you tonight, they've leased out part of the ground floor space and they're requesting a special permit only for signage. So there's not going to be an addition or any exterior modification other than the signs. Um, they are the first tenant in the space, so there are no existing signs to be replaced. Um, because it's just signs, I think you can scroll down to page five of the memo. Um, there we go. So they need a special permit really for two reasons. Um, they are requesting greater a greater number of signs than are permitted by the zoning bylaw. And they're also requesting a greater area of window signage than is permitted by the zoning bylaw. Um, just to note the graphics um, under window graphic A that you'll see, they're perforated vinyl. So those will let light through the window. Um, and those, that's under both options. And then under window graphic B, under both, both alternatives, those are opaque vinyl and they will cover the bottom third of the window. Um, in particular, the applicants looking to apply vinyl window graphics on the windows along Broadway, Everett Street and the corner facade. Um, and this is really to provide privacy for their customers and to screen some of the equipment inside the storefront. Um, We've worked with the applicant on several iterations of the proposal. Um, they've purchased the photography that they're using for the window graphics from Getty Images and they want to use it as part of their branding strategy. Um, so they've shared two options with the board um, that are nearly identical with the exception of how the lower third graphics on window graphics B are cut. So under option two, they're die cut along the top around the edges of the fruit and vegetables. Um, and then separately on page six, you're right about there, the bullets. Um, we had called attention to a few clarifications that we were looking for, um, and the applicant today responded to those. So we do know that um, the wall sign, um, they've revised the sign of the wall sign in order to comply with section 6.2.5 D10. Um, so it will be um, at least 14, uh, approximately 14 inches from the edge of the wall that the sign is going to be attached to. And then the um, window graphic on the entry door, the vinyl graphic, they've reduced that to 20 inches by 20 inches. So it therefore complies with section 6.2.1 E3. Um, so I think that's basically in summary what they're looking for. Um, the window graphics are designed, as I mentioned, to provide additional privacy for the customers of Arlington Eats. And I believe the applicant could probably share a little bit more on that if you have questions. Great, thank you, Kelly, I appreciate it. Is there anything that the applicant would like to, um, to highlight in addition to um, what Kelly summarized for us this evening? Um, sure, I'll mention something. So my name is Andy Doan. I'm the executive director of Arlington Eats. And uh, I also want to welcome Michelle uh, Phelan, who is the principal at 96 Point. Uh, she has been incredibly helpful to us. She's an Arlington resident, and she's been joining your time to um, create both something that's visually pleasing as well as practical. So like um, Kelly said, the, the bottom third uh, of these windows really is about covering up backup equipment. So 
we are using every single square inch of the space that we can. Uh, and so we, uh, because those windows are pretty low to the ground, they're 18 inches off the ground, we knew we had to cover some of them up with um, equipment back low, um, low reach and refrigerators and some low shelving. And so to have that, um, you know, graphic on the bottom there really will be visually pleasing and also will cover the back of refrigerators because no one, you know, wants to look at that when they're going by on Broadway. Um, and then the other highlight that Kelly already mentioned was just really respecting the privacy and dignity of the guests who come to Arlington Eats. Uh, we have heard from so many people that admitting and needing to come to a food pantry is really a challenge. It's a huge barrier. And so as we were planning the design of this space, both interior and then the exterior, we really had that in mind. Like, how can we create a space that's really dignified, it's respectful? Um, and again, Broadway is a pretty busy street. So wanting to make sure that we have um, those, especially that block of windows that's curved, just making sure that those are um, covered uh, with some vinyl graphics so that people don't feel like they're on display when they're shopping. Um, graphic window B on Broadway and in the, um, the um, adjacent side on Everett will actually have some blinds that come down during the market opening, so that will help the privacy on those um, on those windows. But having um, that curved window is a little challenging to get blinds there, so that's why we're um, proposing graphics for that, that set of windows. Great, thank you very much. And I really appreciate the thoroughness of the application. So Michelle, thank you so much for donating your, your time and um, Andy for making sure that we had such a thorough application. Uh, let's see, I'll turn it over now to my colleagues for any questions or comments that they might have. And we'll start with Ken. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you for uh, the thoroughness of this documentation here. I do have a couple of quick questions here. When I look at the uh, Windows Graphics B, there's two windows that have the graphics on it. I believe one of those windows go into the lobby of the housing. Is that not true? Or am I looking at the plans wrong? So the lobby of the um, housing departments, that's actually on Everett Street. So it's farther back on Everett. I don't know that we, did we have that in our elevation? I think there was well, a plan in the, in the package. I don't know, Jenny, if that's the same document you have. Wait, can you pull up it's that It's around plan? the corner. It's, it's around the corner, Ken, the lobby entrance. But when I look at the plan, it says lobby. Am I missing something here? If you if you look at the, um, the there are two PDFs. The PDF that you were just scrolling through was the one we submitted today to show what the window graphics were going to look at on the door. But the other PDF, um, the, the original application, um, shows a plan view. <clears throat> and in the plan view, can you'll see on Everett Street where the entry lobby is into the apartment building, the windows um, adjacent to that entry are part of Arlington Eats and they, they are not into the lobby. So right there. I'm, I'm talking about the one on Broadway. I think I understand. Are you talking about, um, you, we have the floor plan at the beginning of the application and it says lobby in that. That's Correct. actually the Arlington Eats lobby. So yeah, this, this is where you're seeing. So these, this entry on um, Broadway is actually gonna be the main entrance to the lobby for Arlington Eats. So we're actually gonna have some indoor waiting for folks that don't have to wait outside. I see. So that's part of your space. Right. Okay. It, 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 my mistake. I just, <laughs> I just saw a lobby there and I said, wait a minute. Uh, you know, you're going a little aggressive with the signage there, but okay. Uh, well, besides that, I think the other question I had was uh, what kind of light, I'm, I'm more concerned about what kind of light comes out of this, out of, out of the retail space. So like when I'm driving by, I don't want it to seem like a dark um, ground floor there. So there's no, nothing's occupied there. So if the thing is screened, is it a two way, is there enough light coming out? So it looks like some, there are activities happening inside that ground floor space or is it, I just don't want to seem like it's a walled off blank space there. Do you want me to feel that Andy? I think that's a head nodding yes. Go ahead. Yourself. Sorry, I can't see you. The um the faceted window can would be uh, perforated, so by day the window would you would see a graphic, but.
but by night you would see directly inside and it will be illuminated. So any light that's on inside would allow that space to look occupied, just like a bus wrap graphic would. Okay, what so, kind of screen is that, Michelle? Uh, okay. What's the percentage, like 25% or? We have a sample of it. It was, it was actually submitted. I believe it's a 65% screen, but if you scroll up, it'll tell you. It was, it was recommended by 3M, 3M directly. That's right, what you're looking at right there is just a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, kind of a, a, a visual to kind of show you what we mean by perforation, but we actually submitted actual samples with the actual material um, to the um, town hall. I don't know when, Andy, I think you brought it in just before vacation, just before the holiday. But you feel that that's enough screening, that there's enough uh, light to be, be able to come out? That's what, yes, that's what was rec recommended to me by 3M, under oh. understanding what we wanted to do, what we wanted to achieve. It's called White Perf 8170-P40. All right, I trust you guys. Um, that's, there's enough light coming out. That's um, those are my only two concerns, and one of them was wrong. I'm all set. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Jean, any questions or comments for the applicant? Start with a couple comments. Number one, Arlington Eats is a great organization. I love it. My household is one of your, I'm sure, many, many donors from Arlington. So I'm excited you're moving into this space. Um, I just had a couple of questions. If you can go to, let's stop there for a second. No, that's fine. Go to the next one, it's even better. The two windows to the right of the Arlington Eats sign, are they, what, are they going to have anything in front of them at all? Uh, no, that's office space. So they'll just be open windows? Yeah. And then the, um, area above the graphics to the left of the door, there'll be window shades in front of, of it. What will it be above the fruit and vegetables looking things? Yeah, we're planning on having blinds there. Blinds, okay. And how about the front door? The front door will just be open, just clear glass or tempered glass, whatever the glass that is there currently. Okay, great. And um, I don't know about these graphics. Are they applied on the outside of the window or the inside of the window? They would be applied on the inside, mm -hmm. okay. second surface. And do, do you know, do they fade over time or they maintain their sort of bright appearance? You know? they, should, they should be treated with a UV protectant and should last. I don't know what the what the warranty is on them. The we have the um I'm, I don't I don't have the warranty information on that. Yeah, you know I I thank you. I think that's helpful. Um, I think yeah I think for the reasons you gave, it's in the public interest for for this. So I have no problems with it. That's all I got. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Melissa, any questions or comments? Um, no, I, I'm excited for you guys to find the space and, and move in. I think that's great for Arlington. Um, I guess I was trying to open up mine um, um, from my end. The PDF was a little sticky, but the the awnings, is that part of this request? I mean, I know it's, we're talking about just the graphics. Is that come at a separate time or how is that being dealt with? That's uh, the base building. They've already done that. That's They've HCA. already done that. Oh, they, it is. In. Okay. Um, great. Well then, cause I think that enhances it compared to the, some of the initial, some of the other pictures. Um, and then I guess this is just a random question though. Do you feel like there'd be any confusion with some of the fruit and vegetables that people just come in thinking it's like a corner market or, you know, just, had that been talked about? Just curious. Yeah, we did. We said the more the, the better it looked, the more likely people might come in thinking it's a yeah a corner store, right. uh, and that's okay. I mean, yep. if if it ends up being that someone wants to come in and shop and they don't necessarily need our services, maybe they can be a volunteer or a donor. So. Yeah, give them. 
Okay, great. Um, and so from the sign perspective, I'm fine with it. Looks good. Great, thank you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Steve, questions or comments? I did have a few questions earlier. Um, just about some of the dimensional dimensional aspects. Uh, Kelly answered them in her opening remarks. Um, so I just have one comment. Given the two options, one and two, uh, I like two a little better. It had a more three-dimensional feel to it. Otherwise, it looks good. Great. Thank you, Steve. And I just have um, one question and, and one comment as well. So my, um, my question is about the, uh, the sign, um, Jenny, if you're driving, if we can go back to the Broadway elevation, the sign that is the, the main, I, that one right there, the entry sign panel, um, I just want to confirm that is unlit, correct? Is there any um, concern or desire about, um, is there any ability to light that? And the reason I ask is, you know, just thinking about your hours and how early it, it, it gets dark in the in the winter time wanting to make sure that people can can find your your location so I just wanted to ask about any consideration for internal or external lighting for that sign yeah we I don't know if we've looked at internal um, we did pick the white background for that very reason for it to be more visible unfortunately there's no electrical ability to like get any anything outside you know in terms of that kind of stuff we weren't allowed to do that with uh, you know the landlord so Okay. We don't have that at this point. Okay, great. Um, understand that, and I understand. You know, again, the white background, trying to maximize your, your visibility without the ability to 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 light that sign. Perhaps that's something the landlord, if there is an issue, would be willing to work with you on in the in the in the future. Because I certainly support um, additional lighting if that's something you wanted to to add in the future. Um, and then, um, you know, again, I know that you are looking for um, signage re relief in terms of the the um, amount of the percentage of window covering. Um, we have granted that in the past when there are specific situations, such as, again, some of our cannabis establishments who have requirements. And I think the, um, the, the reasoning that you, you know, via, via Kelly and her memo have um, provided in terms of your request for privacy for your, your, your guests, um, certainly to me is, um, is worthwhile for us to, to, to consider approving. Um, like Steve, I, I also preferred the second option, the more dynamic um, uh, presentation of the, the lower graphics with the, the cutout as opposed to the flat, um, the flat option uh, for option number one. Um, I'd be curious, I know Steve and I have uh, given our opinion if, if my colleagues have any um, have any preference there, but we'll circle back to that, I think, after we take public comment, unless there are any other uh, comments from, from the board members. So we'll throw that open. Um, Jean? Just a quick question. Is there gonna be a building number somewhere on the Broadway side to identify the street address? I, I know the awning on the corner has 117 Broadway. Oh, okay. I can't remember if it's going to have, if there's one on the side too. Okay. That's why I was just wondering. Thanks. Great. Melissa? Um, I was just curious. I'm a big proponent of kind of street activation and trying to figure out ways to also enliven um, commercial corridors. Had there ever been any consideration of kind of, I don't know, sidewalk? I don't want to say sale, but some kind of sidewalk activity. I know privacy is a concern, but sometimes um, it can be more welcoming if you put something out there. And I'm wondering how that, um, if there's been thinking around that and how that would play out. That's a great suggestion. There's not been thinking about that yet. <laughs> I welcome any ideas or suggestions for that. Well, so are you thinking in the vein of a planter or some other... Um... Um, I mean, dip, you know, depending, it could be anything from little bistro seats to planters. I mean, I think um, there's, you know, if the idea is to, you know, invite people and make it more communal, regardless of who they are, someone who's a volunteer or someone who might um, be in need of food. It just seems to me that, you know, the more inviting it is with um, certain kind of, you know, outwardly designed that 
draws people in can be just as welcoming. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments, Ken or Steve, before we open it up? You're good. Okay. So at this time, I'd like to go ahead and um, okay, open it. Sorry. Sorry, before you do that, just want to clarify something. I have been showing on the screen only option one, and I apologize for that. I'm now, I've scrolled down to option two. There were two options in the yes. application package. So if anybody chooses to speak and they want me to switch between the two, I'm glad to do that. And whenever you get to the point of deliberating and making your decision, please just let me know which, which to refer to um, in your deliberation. Great, thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Okay. All right, so at this point, I'd like to go ahead and open um, the forum up for um, public comments. Any member of the public who wishes to speak on this docket member, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. And I'll give it a minute or two for people to raise their hands. Okay, uh, seeing no hands raised, I will go ahead and close public comment for docket number 3520 and uh, turn it back to the board. Um, and let's see, so I, I heard pretty consistent um, approval of this signage package. Uh, Steve and I both voiced a preference for option two, which is the option that Jenny currently has on her screen with the um, die cut um, top of the, the graphic as opposed to the flat top of the graphic. Um, is there any discussion about um, that, that preference? Uh, any, anyone feel differently or um, anyone uh, else support that particular choice as opposed to the other? I'll go to Ken, Melissa, or Jean. I agree with you guys. Option number two is my first choice. It's, uh, it gives me more dynamics and more depth. I like it. Melissa? Um, can you pause on the option, the two options again? Getting... This, this is, is option number two. Oh, the Jenny was just on. Oh, right. With, with the cutout. With the cutout. Yep. Yeah. And like option... Okay. I'd be in agreement with that. Great. Great. And Jean? I agree. Great. So is there a um, motion to, so we know that there was a, um, an amended package submitted today with um, updated window um, graphic sizes. Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, for entry, for the entry. Entry. Um, just the door, the hours. And then the updated size for the wall sign. Perfect. So um, if I could See if there is a motion to approve the amended package as submitted today, the uh, January 3rd. Um, I, uh, so motions. Yep. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Great. Um, and we'll take a vote now on approval of the amended package for the motion. Starting with uh, Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And congratulations. Your signage has been approved. We look forward to you opening and uh, seeing this installed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That closes docket number 3520 and uh, our first agenda item. And we will now find my agenda here, move to item, uh, agenda item number two, which is the continued preliminary discussion of zoning amendments. And I will turn this over to Jenny Wright, who I believe um, has at least one um, of the citizen petition articles uh, that uh, you would like to discuss further. 
Thank you, Rachel. Um, yes, it. Uh, James Fleming had requested uh, some time to discuss a couple more ideas. As you re may recall, he's been uh, talking with the board about other ideas at prior meetings and uh, had emailed me requesting some potential time on the agenda. Um, I had initially thought that I too would have had something to provide to the board uh, for this evening, but could not get that ready to go before I went away for two weeks. So um, with that, James is here and uh, if he is amenable um, and available, he could perhaps uh, join us and talk with you about his ideas. I don't know, I did not have any other communications or correspondence related to this particular item. As you can see, there's nothing else posted with the agenda. So I don't have anything other than that um, and have every intention that for our meeting on the 24th, you will receive draft warrant article language that you would then hopefully move to file uh, for the warrant article deadline that Friday. But with that said, I will, if it's okay, if you don't have any other questions for me, I think uh, give some time to James, but it looks like there might be a question. Yep. So before we um, ask James to to chat with us, it looks like Steve, you had um, you had a question. Yes, um, a question for Ms. Wright. If it's at all, I know time is always a crunch, but if it's possible to have the um, draft warrant language in um, a few days before the 24th, so at yes. least we could provide feedback to staff, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I. Um, <clears throat> so we have a zoning bylaw working group meeting this Wednesday morning, and I think following that meeting, we'll be able we'll have a better sense of everything that we need to draft and put into a memo to the board. And so that it would be to you the week prior. You'll have ample time to review that prior to your meeting on the 24th. Great. Thank Sound you. Good? Okay. Uh, Thank anyone you. else have any questions for Jenny before we move to James? All right, James, you have the floor. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I had two and I I guess I'm trying to remember what we did last time. Did, did I, was I able to share my screen last time or should I just like, I just want to reference parts of the zoning bylaw. No, um, I have your email, but okay. um, if you'd like me to bring up something from the zoning bylaw, I can also do that for you, James. Okay. Just let um, me know what you'd like. Sure. Um, so I guess let's start then with the zoning bylaw. So the section is, um, Use regulations for business districts, which I believe is section five six three, or five five point uh, five 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 three. Too quick, too quick for me. Um, so uh, let me. I'll give you the background on the problem that I'm I perceive and that I'm trying to solve, and then maybe we can talk about what the best approach is. So if you scroll down to page. 5-33 under the class of use eating and drinking establishments for restaurants. There's two lines. Oh, perfect. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I think it's a couple pages down. Uh, one more, one more. There it is. So uh, two line items for well, so under restaurant, there's two lines. There's basically two two categories of restaurant that we decide are varying degrees of acceptable. So one is anything under 2,000 square feet, you have your buy right in some districts and special permit in one other, and then anything over 2,000 square feet, forget it, you need a special permit. So 2,000 square feet is not a lot of space. So my my impression is that this is to this is one more thing that gets in the way of someone opening a a new restaurant, not not one in an existing space that was a restaurant when it turned over, but if you have a change of use for whatever reason, that this is going to be another hurdle for them. So my thinking was, is either do away with it or change the threshold so that it is it applies to fewer new restaurants. Okay. It sounds like you did you have more than one or do you want to start? Yes, yeah, yeah. Th th this just this is one article. Okay, great. So are you looking for feedback from the from the yeah. board on that initial idea? Great. Yeah. So I will um 
I'll turn it over to, um, you know, I'll do a roll call and we'll one by one uh, give you some of our initial thought for this and have people ask you a few questions. And I'll start with uh, with Jean on this. I saw you just unmuted yourself. So <laughs> clearly you have thoughts. So go ahead, Jean. No, not to go first. I just didn't want to forget to unmute okay. myself. Before, well, since but, we're here, why don't you go but, ahead and, and give James some of your initial thoughts? Yeah, Jim, do you have any um, examples of where this prevented a restaurant from opening in town? I don't. Yeah, because I mean, we, you know, that I haven't seen that as a particular problem. And I'd ask the other board members what they think about the other piece, which is when we have looked at restaurants, it's included things like, you know, where will they be parking? How will customers queue up? Things, you know, um, things like that, that are probably important things for there to be some level of review upon. Um, I don't know where the 2000 square foot number came from, but you know, I'm not, you know, unless there's a lot of evidence that this has been a barrier to restaurants, I don't see it as something that necessarily needs to be changed for that reason and because there's might be some benefit. But I'm interested to hear what my colleagues on the board have to say. Great. Thank you, Jean. Ken, initial thoughts, questions? Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, looking at this from a ballpark view of 2,000 square feet. If you were to take a third of that away for the kitchen space, and then that leaves you about 1,500 square feet, and let's say you take 15% of that away for circulation space, uh, that would leave you, uh, I don't know, about somewhere between 12 and 1,300 square, square feet. Um, Actually, Mike's Mike's on the uh, on the line here. For thirteen hundred square feet, uh, for a restaurant, how many? What's the seating? What's the seating capacity of that? Is that like forty? Um, I'm just trying to get an idea of what size restaurant uh, this two thousand square feet sort of gets around. Yeah, that's 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 still a significant space. I mean, uh, that would be um, I'd be pulling a number off the top of my head, but. Um, I mean, I, I could see that being somewhere around 40, 50 seats. Okay. So I, I think I'm encouraged by what you're saying, James, and I like that. Uh, but I, I, I think saying that a 40 or 50 seat restaurant is small, uh, that's not the way to go. Um, I would maybe change it and say, gives opportunities for um, a restaurant to expand in the future because a 40, a 40 seat restaurant is, is a, not a starting point, I don't think. Uh, I think it's a point where you want to grow into. Um, you know, if, if it were limited to like only 12 seats or 20 seats, I might say something, say that's, that's a limiting factor, but at 40 or 50, that's a good sized restaurant uh, to start off with. That's my opinion right now, just off the top of my head. I could be wrong. That's, you know. Great. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Melissa, any, any questions, comments for, for James? Well, I think I, I appreciate the intention behind it, James. Um, I think I'd like to hear a little bit more, probably from, you know, our economic development, you know, staff, you know, Ali Carter looks at this, um, but my sense is from my experience, special yeah. permits, um, you know, they don't have the certainty. So businesses kind of avoid them. Um, from my experience, it's a cost issue. And if we're trying to support an industry that's been hardest hit through the pandemic, this would be something that you'd want to look into a little closer. Um, to enable it, because if there is a threshold that we're missing, um, I think we should address it. But I think we might need a little bit more information on it and how it could, uh, how it plays out in more of our, I would say, our built environment in Arlington. So Melissa, is that something that you would like either Jenny or Kelly to um, address in terms of 
any um, inquiries or barriers that they see from their perspective in terms of applicants? Yeah, I would welcome that. I mean, if you have comments um, now, that would be great. Or if there's um, some sources that you think you can tap into to let me know that, you know, that exists, that would be great too. Great, I'll turn it over to, to Jenny um, for any, any comments on that thread. I don't have an immediate response uh, to Melissa's inquiry. I can look into it a little bit further with Ali Carter and probably with others uh, in the business, business community. I think I'd want to go a little bit further and probably ask. Um, we have a sort of a subgroup of the um, Economic Development Recovery Task Force that's been addressing issues with restaurants. So I can also defer to that group. Um, but I think that it's probably, to your point, a little bit more complicated given Arlington's built environment um, and some of the constraints there, but I don't, I don't have an immediate answer. So I can gladly get back to you or James you, or both. Great, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions, Melissa? Uh, nope, not at this point. Great, um, and then before I turn it over to Steve for any questions, I just wanted to clarify um, you all heard from um, uh, Mike Ciampa be beforehand. And um, Mike, I just wanted to, to see, I, I neglected to ask you to introduce yourself before just so that others on the call um, knew, knew who you were and, and you know why you were weighing in on, on Ken's question. So if you could just quickly introduce yourself. That yes, way. of course, I'm sorry. Um, Mike Ciampa, Director of Inspectional Services. Great, thank you, Mike, I appreciate it. Um, Steve, any questions or comments? Um, I think mine are generally similar to Melissa's. Um, I'm very supportive of the idea, but um, would I guess I'd like to understand a little bit more about what's run into what's been run into, and um, what the economic uh, task force. I'd like to you know to see what they um, you know to get away in from them as well. Great, thanks. So James, um, it sounds like there, there's a little more information, um, especially from, from Ali Carter, that I think would be helpful for the board to, to hear from. Um, I think that uh, it was either Jean or Kin who brought up some good points about the questions that we ask of, especially some of the larger establishments that have come before us in terms of things like trash removal and parking and some of the other items um, to make sure that the establishments have, have considered all of the items related to site. Um, but, uh, you know, again, whether that needs to come in front of this board or there's another body who, who does that, um, you know, I think understanding a little bit more from your perspective and then also from the department, um, what, what constraints have been experienced, um, would be, would be good for us before we chat further on this one. I have a question. Sure. So when it says special permit in the zoning bylaw, that what is, and there are also things that they have to do for signage and all this other stuff. What is the additional effort of a special permit on, on someone who runs into one that, because so for example, the buyer, there's one, the, if you're under 2000, then you're by right. What's the additional cost of that to your business if you're trying to open one? Steve has his hand raised, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, a lot of it is in time and certainty. Um, so just the process of getting a special permit, uh, whether it is through the redevelopment board or the zoning board of appeals, um, restaurants on the commercial strips would be this board. Uh, you're looking at two weeks of advertising, um, some number of weeks before the permit or before the hearing is held. If the hearing is continued, that's another two to four weeks delay there. Uh, then you have to wait for the decision to be signed and wait for an appeal period to pass. So it's, it's a, if things go super quickly, uh, it's at least a two month delay. I, I think, I think would be, would be a reasonable expo, expectation. And if there are, you know, shortcomings and if there, and if something comes up, it could uh, drag out longer. Okay. And what, what is the benefit of having a restaurant over a certain size be under special permit? Why does that need to be specially reviewed? My sense is James that partly it, it's, it's around the seat count. The larger the square footage, the more seats you can have. And then that relates to the parking requirements or usually the traffic circulation. But just to go back to your other 
point on, you know, some of the hurdles that special permits kind of create that <clears throat> it's this uncertainty when you are a business owner considering signing a lease. Um, generally speaking, those, you know, you're committing to, you know, an agreement that you'll be paying um, without certainty that your business will be allowed because there is a possibility a special permit wouldn't be allowed. Um, there's those things. Oftentimes, depending on the community, you also have to, not always, but um, have some legal representation. So there's cost associated with the time that Steve was referencing. Um, so those are just a couple things that kind of add to it. So when, um, you know, a business owner or food service business is considering a place, they might look at that and opt for another location versus selecting that space because it has that special permit. It's just, so it's a factor. Okay. Oops. Looks like, sorry, um, Jim, Don't before worry. we move on from that, I think Kim had a comment and then I'll allow Jean to, to weigh in. I think uh, the answer to your question about size, James, uh, has to do with the larger the restaurant, there's bigger impact on the community. So there's traffic, um, there's um, trash, trash. Um, how the size of the, the size of the building fits within the texture of the of the of the of the community, and also um, um, kitchen exhaust might be you know something like that it might be as simple as something like that where a larger kitchen has a lot of more intake and exhaust, which might affect the neighbors. Things like that is what's, um, you know, that's something we look at. And as a developer in the past, um, generally when you have to go to a special permit, you assign the same amount of time uh, that it would take to build it. So let's say it was a one year construction, you're factoring in one year of permitting. So that's so that's what essentially that that's for that's for a new a new building with a with a restaurant inside. So that's I'm, correct. That's so correct. I'm, I'm imagining you take. I'm trying to think of a building in town that already has a tenant. That is, that's like a to take a bank in town and suppose you want to go to a restaurant. They have to go through this process too, even though it's not it's a, it's the same building. There's there's no impact on the neighbors from new construction size or shadows or anything if they're just moving in and yet there's still this uncertainty yes that's why i agree with you where uh, this zoning bylaw encourages smaller restaurants and doesn't uh, encourage uh, say a larger uh, footprint restaurant that go in there because uh, if they were below 2,000 square feet then they'd be all set they would not need a permit, a special permit. Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll stop, Rachel. You have Jean wants to talk. Okay. I'll, wait, I'll wait till you're done. I'm done. I I have a different perspective on this as somebody who's run some small nonprofit businesses, and for some of those businesses, had to obtain special permits for various sorts of things. And that is, yes, it's going to take some extra time and not that much in Arlington. Um, and you might have to pay for counsel and that will cost you some, but you usually have a pretty good idea about what you need to do to get the special permit. You would have talked to Jenny or Kelly or other folks in their department ahead of time. And so you go in with a pretty high level of certainty about what you're going to need to get the permit. And usually you're not going to sign the lease until you get the permit or the lease is going to be contingent upon um, getting the permit. So um, I'm not saying it's not a factor to take in consideration, but it's mostly thinking about timing and what the extra cost is to put together the package and maybe um, have counsel, but I would be surprised if it were a big deterrence. And I could be surprised, that's why I started by asking you, James. I would be surprised if it was a big deterrent for restaurants to move into town. 
So I, I have talked to one business owner whose business is now closed because of the pandemic. And she had, she, she was, this was her first venture and apparently it was hell for her because she didn't know anything because it's your first time. If you've, if you've opened businesses before, I'm sure it is easier, but for her, it was, it was just a matter of not even knowing who to go to, to ask, to get questions about this. And so you eventually you do, you hire the lawyer, you pay them to do all this for you. And if you're, if you are starting out, I, I would hope that you have that extra money budgeted to do this. Because if you don't, then then that that make, puts you further on the knife edge of whether you can even open the business or not. Um, so so James, I, I appreciate that concern, and I'll just um, say, and then I think we'll probably move on to your your next sure. Um, sure. item. That that is something that that actually was brought up in the economic recovery task force, thinking about ways that we could simplify and. Um, be clearer about what the process is. In fact, provide an outline or a very clear roadmap for businesses looking to either renovate or open in Arlington as to what the process is um, that needs to be, be undertaken. So I, I think that you, that's an excellent point that you bring up um, from your experience in speaking with that owner and something that I know that the department is actively working with the select board as well as um, several other groups in town to to make clear that is that is a real opportunity for for the town to to address. And Jenny, I saw you nodding your head. I I think that that's something that that you all are currently various agreement. And it's not just the zoning issue. It's many other. There are many other permitting hurdles for opening a new business in Arlington in general, but specifically for restaurants. It is definitely not just the special permit. There are many other factors. And Kin's point about you know, thinking about the permitting and the licensing, and there's a lot of other variables that go into building out a restaurant. I have no doubt that it probably does take about a year um, just to get all of that done, whether you're talking a brand new building or outfitting uh, and renovating an existing space. Um, I'm sure we can produce examples um, illustrating these points. Right. So I guess I'll, I'll talk with Jenny offline and email. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you. Um, you had a, a second. That I you do. Uh, Stevie, yes. you, kept, you kept doing your hand raise. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. That's okay. Um, I mean, between um, Mr. Benson's and Mr. Fleming's comments and actually Ms. Ray's comments as well, it almost, you know, having a checklist or I, I would... This seat almost seems like a case where um, performance standards would be, you know, perhaps preferable in some cases to, um, you know, a special permit. As in a do all of the do all of the things on this list, and you will get a and you will get a permit. Um, but you know, that's more that's that's there's a lot more to that than just a, a square foot a square footage calculation. That's a good point, and and I, as I mentioned, I, I I do believe that that's something that the um, is one of the outcomes from that that task force that um, that the town is is looking at specifically for restaurants, but for other types of commercial businesses as as well. All right, James, on to number two. Cool. So uh, for this one, the best way is probably to oh yes, she brought it up. Thank you. So um. Ready the nine uh, writer. So, so, so this is a shot of uh, GIS. So Melrose Street is my street. I live uh, three houses in on Melrose at 15. And I was thinking about this. So the, the background to all to this and the previous article is that uh, I like my neighborhood. I like more rest. I like restaurants. It'd be nice if there were more restaurants, but all the spaces, well, okay, not all the spaces, most of the spaces are full and then COVID happened and then uh, we lost a couple of businesses in the neighborhood. Um, so I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we had more businesses, but all the business zoning spaces are occupied with businesses. So you cannot even in principle open another business in this neighborhood. Um, and also uh, I had found the zoning map of Arlington from, I forget the year, something like 70 years ago, which showed what the business district used to be, which was like a hundred feet on either side of Mass Ave, the entire length of the town was eligible for businesses. Um, 
So I was thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice if we just had a few more business parcels in my neighborhood as a starting point? Um, and then I talked to town council about this and he said, uh, you're gonna have to notify all the abutters of every parcel you wanna change uh, through registered mail. That takes a lot of time and money and I'm not gonna do the entire town. So I thought this seems like a decent place to start because this is my, this is my neighborhood, this is Capitol Square and there's a gap in the business district. So I was like, well, let's take this and rezone it to B3 or maybe B2. One of the, one of the two on either side of it, just fill in the gap that was created whenever it was created, I have no idea. So your your question, do you, do you have a specific question or just looking for, for feedback, thoughts? Just, just, just feedback. So town council the, already told me that I have to notify the abutters, um, yep. which is fine. There's only a dozen of them. Um, yep. The, just the question, the question is, do you have any feedback or anything that I'm probably going to run into as a result of this? Um, one, the cursory, cursory checks I have done, the uses in these four parcels are allowed in B3. So if you turn it to B3, you're not creating a non-conforming use. Um, and it doesn't require them to change their building to something else. So there's, there should be, I think, no impact on the people who live there now. There's a, the 150 is an apartment, Three, a three family apartment, 147 is two condos, 151 is a two family that's got a, an owner who lives in another town, and then R5 is an apartment building owned by La Court Realty. Great. So um, I will uh, turn it over. We'll start with Ken for thoughts on James's proposal of a micro rezoning for uh, this particular section of town. Um, James, that dark red, that's um, sort of like the top left, um, that's, that's zone business, B2. B3. And then the pink in the bottom right is B2. So, so the area that you have highlighted there right now is uh, R something? R, R, the one parcel is R5 and then the rest of it is R2. And you're trying to make it more conduct, uh, uh, respot zone that so that it's it's um... continuous. Yeah. So the business district just keeps going, either as B three or B two. So that it's just continuous business all the way down, along the massive frontage. And and this is just an example that you want to do in this one area as opposed to. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so I, would, I would love to do the whole town, but I can't afford to do the whole town because there's a lot of parcels and I have to notify, I have to notify all the abutters, which that's a lot of mail. It's a lot, it's a lot of mail and I'm not going to do that. So I'm sure this is something the ARB could do somehow, but I don't know if you have time to do it. So I pitched this as a, I would, I would be willing to do this because it's, it's the end of my street. So I have a personal stake in it. Um, and it's small enough that uh, it almost seems not worth fighting about, except for the people who live there, whom I'm sure will have opinions. Yeah, um, I, I, I want to say I'm very supportive of this, but I'm not sure how the, uh, yes, I think you're, you're right. Because you're, the neighbors sitting there saying, well, I bought this land and it had a certain it was that it was um, zoned certain a certain way, and then we're changing it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the areas that you're changing, the values are going to increase quite a bit, and I'm not sure the uh, the neighbors will like that because that their their value may decrease. Wait, I thought you said that it would. You said it would increase. The no. the, the land that you're changing would increase. The lands that the adjacent to it would probably may decrease i'm not sure why uh, would they why would they decrease that would be an assessment wouldn't it yes i'm um, just stating my opinion i think that if you're if you had an, um some of those are what two families yeah there's yeah there's two of them that are two families one to three and so that so that it's in a sort of two or three family neighborhood which looks like all alike on your street there and then all of a sudden you come up to it i know you come up to mass ave it all of a sudden becomes a business district. So your, your your next door neighbor is a business. So it might be a big parking lot, could, could be a back of a building. 
you know, if it, if it does become developed, that's all. Uh, sure, but but I I have no control over what happens. I can't tell them what will be built, and that that's why the zoning exists. There are standards for setbacks and heights and everything. There are rules about it. Yeah, no, I. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate, James. I'm not saying I disagree. No, 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 no I, I get it. And, uh, well, and I'm there's, just... also, there's also the ARB, which will, which anything on Mass Ave almost certainly goes in front of you. Uh, uh, when I uh, see what the other um, board members say, Rachel, I'm going to um, not say anything more for you now. Okay, great. Jean. Yeah, I guess my initial thought was, you know, we've said a lot that Mass Ave is a inexcusable, if I can use that word, crazy quilt of different zoning districts up and down. And this would make it a very slightly less crazy, crazy quilt, but still a crazy quilt in other places. Um, I think that if you zone this B3, I'm not sure what we had in mind, all of these current uses are allowed in B3, yes. so you wouldn't be making any of them non-conforming, which I think would be helpful too. Yes, that's right. That was the intent. Um, I, I think you need to notify not only the abutters, but the actual owners of the buildings. The, the abutters are, the owners and the abutters are no, right. subsets because right. they're abutters of each other. Right. Well, yeah, they are, as a matter of fact, except for, well, I don't know. But anyhow, you have to do the owners and the abutters. Um, yeah, I guess the, the thing that we can't answer is would anybody, when they saw the change of zoning, say, gee, maybe I should sell because I'm, get, I'm just saying the property will go up in value probably if it goes from um, what are these R2s and an R5 to um, a B3, let's say. So the property would probably go up in value. Um, so if I were the owner of one of these places, I would, in a sense, be getting a gift from the town because the town is giving me the ability to either sell it for more money or to redevelop it or to convert what is residential to commercial. Um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I think it's a good idea. I don't know what all the long-term implications are for those specific buildings, maybe they'll stay the way they are for a long time. They certainly have the ability to stay the way, the way they are for a long time. But you know, since we envision Mass Ave as a commercial corridor in town, it applies that a little bit more uniformly to these few blocks. So yeah, I think it, um, yeah, those are my um, initial thoughts at this point. Thank you, Jean. Melissa, thoughts, question. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, James, have you actually talked to the property owners to date? I have sent them messages, but I can't control if they respond to me. So no, I haven't right. heard back. I haven't heard back. Basically, basically the, the letter was saying, you know, I'm trying to do this thing and you know here's my best guess as to what will happen and that there will be a public hearing and I have to notify them again anyways because there'll be an by registered mail when we if, if this goes to a warrant article because that's just part of the process for rezoning so they'll they'll get an actual public hearing to voice their opinions at right um well in my experience kind of along you know with my background in planning and economic development, um, engaging the property owners is probably the first thing to do. Understand where they're at, what their long-term plans are, and what would trigger any change. Um, and so, I mean, I think kind of 
being able to engage with them would be really important, whether it's, you know, us as a town, whether it's you as a proponent for this. I think, um, the again, the intention with this aligns with um, the goals that we've stated in the master plan, the goals that ARB have stated around, you know, developing Mass Ave as the commercial corridor and increasing commercial opportunities. Um, and I think this could be considered almost like a pilot and a test to um, explore that. So I can see that. I think <clears throat> if you were going to go down that path, then and you're going to champion this, which is pretty, you know, it's exciting that you're trying to take this on. Um, it would be great to really understand where the property owners are coming from so that they can support it. Um, and they understand the thinking. There's, you know, the implications, we can all speculate on value, sales, redevelopment from a change. Um, and that's why it's going to be important where the property owners are on this. Thank you, Melissa. Those were all really excellent points that you raised. Uh, Steve. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, a couple of comments. Um, so I understand the basic intention is to rezone, it looks like four parcels in the, you know, to make the district more contiguous, um, less fragmented, and you know, allow at least the possibility that they might be redeveloped uh, at, at a later point in time as commercial properties. Is, is that the general gist? Yeah, so I, yeah. I don't know if they will be, but I know that it's not possible to do it right now. Right, right, right. So they're, what, we're, what we're really doing is just kind of, you know, if what, we're playing around with the zoning equivalent of the Overton window. <laughs> um, what um, I, I, I agree with what uh, Ms. Tintakala said. Um, I think it is very important to talk to the owners um, just from, you know, from a, the perspective of town meeting. Um, if owners were opposed to a, a parcel rezoning, um, I think that would be a, a very big obst would create a big obstacle for uh, that you would have to overcome. On the other hand, if the owners were supportive and town meeting knew this, that I believe would give you a better chance um, at acquiring the necessary votes. Now to, I under, yeah, I agree with Mr. Vence and this and Mr. Lau that this might, um, you know, this could increase the value of these four parcels, but I just want to point out that these use, this used to be all one continuous business district. And at some point in the past, um you know essentially the town took those rights away the town took those rights away so it removed the op abil any opportunity to do commercial development on them um so you know i i'm i'm i don't mind um giving back something that we took away a couple of generations ago um overall yeah i think this is a, a great idea if, i i think this is you know it's a small step but i i think it's um i i am generally supportive of it Uh, James, any additional questions that you have for the for the board on on this item? Anything procedural that I am going to run into with rezoning parcels? So, I, I town councilor said we have to notify the abutters, which includes most of most but not all the owners. It sounds like for, from you, I should probably try again reaching out to the owners. But is there anything? in particular that I'm probably going to run into that's going to be just a legal thing or technicality that means that this can't be done. I'm going to defer that question to Jenny to see if you have any insight there. It sounds like James is already in touch with um, town council, Doug Heim, um, who would be able to, to also answer some of those questions. But Jenny, um, did you have any additional thoughts on um, any any specific legal items or procedural procedural uh, items that the team should be aware of. I'll start with procedural. The second one I'm not as comfortable answering in the immediate, but the first one with procedural, the procedure is actually in the zoning bylaw as to how to do a zoning map change and the steps that need to be taken. There's nothing more to it than that. 
um, thankfully. So um, that is, those are the steps in the process. We've actually only had one zoning map change in the time that I've worked for the town. Um, we have had one other proposed, but it didn't make it to town meeting. It was uh, voted no action at the time, uh, a citizen's petition actually. Um, so the only zoning map change that we've done is related to the DPW site, which we um, changed uh, the use, which had been an R and it went to an industrial zone. Um, so procedurally, you know, I, I can't speak to anything further than what is already in the zoning bylaw, but I would be glad to walk you through those steps and what that might look like. And we can, of course, talk about that offline. Legally, um, you've already spoken with town council. I don't think there's anything more that I can provide you in terms of legal guidance from a town perspective. I'm not part of the legal department, of course, but from a zoning and land use perspective, I think you'd probably want to look carefully at um, the cases that may or may not exist in relationship to the parcels that you're talking about rezoning. Um, I don't know what the history is of those parcels. I don't know um, the, you know, the, the whole history of those parcels. And I think that that would be relevant to you doing a little bit more research. And we can, of course, help you with that at the town um, to guide you through what that might look like. Um, I can't think of any other legal hurdles because of that particular location. But, um, you know, in, in a different circumstance, there could be environmental hurdles, there could be other um, issues of concern that might be legal in nature. Those are the only things that I can in the immediate think about, um, but I'm glad to continue the discussion with you uh, separately to follow up. And also when I get additional information, um, okay. perhaps from town council's office. Um, from, a, from a warrant article filing perspective, mm -hmm. is there anything different about this than say a, uh, something else? Like, do I have to include the like the proof that I sent a thing, a registered mail to the owners with the article, or is that later or something else? I would suggest that uh, we can talk about this as a follow up, um, and we okay. can talk about the steps that you take and how you know the the wording in the warrant article as you started with town council already, just for the sake of the board's time um, okay. and process. But it it would look similar to the warrant article that was filed in relationship to the DPW site, which is why I referenced that. Okay. You do have to you have to reference the map numbers and um, there's some other details that would be needed in the actual warrant article language. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thanks, James. And and I would just I just wanted to thank you, Jenny. I'd like to um, really just underscore what Melissa um, counseled you to do everything you can to try and contact the property owners. Um, I I think it's really important to. To, to speak with them directly um, and, and concentrate your efforts there before going too, too far down, down the path as well. I just wanna speak to that if you don't mind, Rachel. That was actually the downfall of the prior citizen petition was no um, or limited to no outreach to the abutters uh, in relationship to the map change. Um, and that was very, uh, the board was very discouraged by that. The board, of course, at that time, it does not look like this board, um, except for Kim. Don't know if you remember this, but um, but this was, you know, a, you know, a different, this was a different group of people, but I think you're hearing a similar concern. So I think you should take that under advisement very seriously. Okay. Any other questions, no. James, related to these two? Well, thank you. Um, I really appreciate all of the creative um, ideas that you bring to the table and your enthusiasm. So thank you so much for bringing both of these to us today. And we look forward to seeing where, where these both develop. So right. more soon, it sounds like. All right, thank you, James. Uh, so with that, we will, uh, Jenny, is there anything else related to zoning amendments? I believe that was it for this evening, correct? That is all, yes. Okay. Great. Super. Uh, so with that, we will close agenda item number two. Um, I'm sure that there may be um, thoughts that some of the members of the public have related to the two, um, the discussion we just had with James, and I'd like to encourage that under agenda, agenda item number three, which is our open forum. So uh, any member of the public who is with us this evening, 
who would like to speak and address the board um, may do so by using the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. You'll be given three minutes to speak. So uh, please go ahead and raise your hand now if you'd like to speak this evening. Give a minute or two. All right, we have uh, one person right now. Uh, so I'll invite uh, Don Seltzer. Uh, before Don speaks, I'll remind everyone to please introduce yourself by first, last name, and address. And again, you will be given uh, up to three minutes for any remarks, any questions or comments you have to the board. So Don, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, I have a question, actually a request related to the ongoing discussions of the housing production plan. Um, some of the board members who are active on the Arlington list know that there's been a bit of discussion um, related to affordability, 40B, and the subsidized housing inventory list. Uh, I cannot find on the town's website anywhere a list of what our 40B properties are. And I think it would be useful for further public discussion if this list was made available. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll actually ask Jenny to address whether yeah, or not there is. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Don, that list is actually the subsidized housing inventory, which is, um, it's in the housing, the prior housing production plan as an appendix. Um, and I am I can't remember off the top of my head if it's also, is it also an appendix in the current housing plan draft yet? Okay, it, it will is, be. yeah, uh, I think it's probably been updated in the last five years. And uh, it would be useful if it was someplace on the town website where people could find it uh, more easily rather than trying to dig through the appendix yep. of some previous plan. So it just a suggestion. On, that, this, absolutely, the subsidized housing inventory is on the affordable housing page itself. Um, so I, I, uh, I would be glad to follow up with you on this, um, okay. of course, but that is that is what the 40B, that is what is 40B is referring to as the subsidized housing inventory for the town. Okay, thanks, Jenny. I'll, I will follow up with you on it. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for that um, point about just trying to find it. Great, thank you, Don, and thank you, Jenny, for the um, clarification. Uh, any other member of the public wishing to speak this evening? Give another couple seconds. All right, uh, seeing none, we will close the open forum for this evening. And uh, I believe that is it for us tonight. So uh, if there is a motion to adjourn, I'd love to entertain that right now. So motions. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Melissa. I will take the roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Dean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I am a yes as well. So thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Happy New Year, and we will see you on the 24th. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year, thank you. <laughs>